okay this is uh, LS506 and this is uh, scientific communication uh, I'm going to do a lecture on scientific communication or communication in science or scholarly communication okay first uh, let's talk a little bit not in too much detail about the information cycle and, and its functions because we have already done that in a previous uh, lecture However, uh, I think it is very important that we understand how this cycle of scientific or, or uh, information works, okay? And in this cycle, we as librarians can see, we can, we can be part of each stage, okay? So if we, if, we, we, if we go to the beginning, the beginning would be creation and generation. In this case, uh, in science, we're talking about uh, scientists. Uh, they are the ones who create and generate uh, scientific information uh, or scholarly communication or scholarly information, I'm sorry. Uh, and, but we as librarians can also generate uh, information. We can become in, uh, generators of, generators of uh, scientific information. Of course, if we see the lar larger picture, all human beings generate information, but not all information is scientific information because scientific information has to follow a procedure. Okay, so once that information is generated, uh, we use the information. Uh, other scientists use information, other professionals use that information, and we as librarians also can use that information to uh, solve problems, to address reference questions, or to create new information. Then uh, uh, that uh, 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 generation of information is also part of the organization. And something that uh, uh, librarians and uh, information uh, people have trying uh, to do is what it is called knowledge management. And knowledge management is really important. And let me explain why. In any institution, in any industry, there is a lot of knowledge that uh, has been created within the institution but it has not any record it hasn't been recorded or written down in any way and when people move to other jobs or retire that knowledge is lost so uh, there has been an effort and a few years now to see how we can record that knowledge that is no the uh, uh, formal knowledge that is written in journals or books but that is knowledge created in the organization okay so that so that's what knowledge management is trying to do uh, see how they can record and then how can they share that knowledge created in that organization or institution Okay, and we as librarians are part of that uh, process. Then there is a, the how do we organize information, okay? And here we have uh, at least four things that we do. We classify information, we catalog information, we assign subjects, uh, and we assign call numbers. Because the whole idea of librarianship, of course, uh, is that w that uh, we can uh, organize information, we can manage information, we can store information, but most importantly is that we can retrieve that information for our patrons, okay? Then we do storage and preservation, and we have digital collections too. So storage and preservation, uh, meaning printed and electronic uh, uh, information, and nowadays, of course, what it is most important in, in, in scientific information or on um, um, scholarly communication is the dig digital collections. And we have seen this semester, we have been working with uh, data, electronic databases, okay? Because most of the uh, scientific information is there. As I said before, I, I, if I didn't, please uh, excuse me. Uh, 
the journal, the scientific journal, is the f uh, f uh, formal channel of communication in science. Okay, we use books too, but is the is the journal is the journal article, and of course is the peer review journal article. And I think uh, we did a a lecture a, maybe a week ago on peer review. A very important uh, uh, function here that we librarians do is what is called here indexing, abstracting, uh, analysis of subject, ident uh, terms that identify terms, assign control vocabulary. Why? Because by doing these uh, things, indexing, abstracting, subject analysis, uh, terms, descriptors, that are as that are control vocabulary we are able to retrieve that information that it is in the digital collections okay so it in and even before the digital collection when we had all printed uh, sor sources and we were using our uh, uh, car catalog we also assign uh, descriptors and, uh, and uh, subject terms so it is very very important uh, uh, that we as librarians, even though if we don't work uh, doing that, but that we understand uh, when because it will make our search, and uh, I always uh, like to point that out, it will make the search more uh, uh, relevant. Okay, because the idea when we search as and we are working as reference librarian and we do a search, we don't want to get as hundreds of hundreds of hits uh, or you know of sources. No, we want to be as relevant as possible. We want really to be able to select those resources that are uh, the best for our patron or client. Okay. So it is very important that we understand how uh, subject terms, indexing, abstracting, and descriptors work. Then comes the other function of access and retrieval, and that's what we're going to do or our client is going to do. And then that, uh, that information, of course, is uh, communicated, and that's what is called information dissemination. If we see the, the information cycle this way, uh, we, we can see again, and I'm not going to stay uh, too much time on this slide, that we librarians can be part of each stage, okay? Of course, there are some that are more librarian inclined. I think it's all this area on this side here, knowledge management, organization, storage, and preservation. And on this side is we if we are creating also uh, uh, scientific, scholarly, or professional knowledge. So please, uh, and this is another thing before I go to the next slide because I think it is very important. Um, librarianship and information science is a discipline that cut, cut across every other discipline. Okay? Uh, and we have to be aware of that. That, uh, that our discipline, information science, it cut across every, touches every other discipline. Uh, so that's why our, our uh, function, what the things we do, our work is so important. Okay? Okay, let's go now. Let me see if I have anything else to say uh, in our information cycle and the functions. I think that's enough. And also, there is another, as, as I said, I think I have posted another lecture on the information cycle. But, I, I, you know, I, I am so amazed uh, when I see this uh, uh, cycle. To me, that's, it's so important because, uh, it, it, because it touches. We, 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 and, um, I'm sorry, I want to say this, I'm going to say it quickly. Uh, when we st go to the university, when we study, we, we see like subject areas or domains, math, uh, biology, sociology, philosophy, and we see them separately. Well, what I want you to get in this uh, class and out of me, and that's the most important piece of knowledge that I can 
uh, communicate to you is that we 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 have to th we when we think about li librarianship it's impossible to think about librarianship like okay reference or cataloging or collection development or or this and that no we have to understand that librarianship as a whole and that everything is interrelated so if we want to be good reference librarians we have to understand indexing we have to understand abstracting we have to understand how uh, uh, subject is assigned. We have to understand what descriptors, descriptors are. We have to understand what uh, control vocabulary is. That way we can be better uh, reference librarians. So everything is interrelated. Okay, now, and this is something that I think I covered uh, in my last lecture. It's about uh, what scholarly journals are what the peer review process is, and I just mentioned before that the uh, scholarly journal and the journal article is a formal channel of communication in the scientific community. And that's a, it has a very, very long tradition. And um, it started with a, uh, a journal in England called the Royal Transactions that uh, it's, uh, it, it's regarded as one of the first uh, journals, scientific journal, all the first one. Okay, uh, it, as I said in the, my previous lecture, it offers a certain degree of reliability, uh, peer review. And what it is important in science, and this and this will tie to the next week uh, lecture, is that uh, science is not a isolated phenomenon. To do when you write on when you when you experiment when you do a discover when you, you you do your scientific work is always grounded on prior works and this is very important and i'm going to do a, a lecture also on why citations are so so important okay and they are very important because you're giving intellectual uh, 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 recognition to whoever wrote the piece and and that's part of the intellectual property but they are very important because science is always grounded in prior work okay so that's why citations are so important because sometimes we have to we have to go to those uh, to the prior works and that's of course a citation analysis and, and we'll talk about that a little bit in this lecture and, and more in detail in the next lecture um, some uh, for reference and or citations these are the uh, unit of analysis that we can uh, get to when we use citation analysis we can measure productivity and, uh, and, and productivity or output and impact of individuals of groups of labs of departments universities even of nations and of course of journals the same thing happened when we look at industrial information such as patents we can see we can we can analyze patents and we can see output of, or production of patents are all, and also impact of patents okay and we can analyze that at every level from the individual to the nation and we have here so several uh, units, individuals, uh, groups, nations, journals, etc. So it is very important that we understand a little bit of citation analysis, okay? And we will talk about that, uh, as I said, in the a, in a, in a next lecture. Now, in a scholarly communication or scientific communication, we have at least two great areas, uh, two, when I, I'm sorry, two, two big areas of study. One is called information seeking behavior and the other one is information dissemination. Okay? So in a scholarly communication or scientific communication we have two big areas of study and I will explain what they are uh, the definitions. But I want I want you to remember one is information seeking behavior that's how people uh, it doesn't have to be scientists. In this case, of course, we're talking about scientists, but children, uh, uh, young adults, adults, etc. How they search for information, how they look for information. 
that's their information seeking behavior. If you are a professional, if you are a teacher, if you are a professor, if you are a, a medical doctor, in any profession there is information seeking behavior. And the other important area of scholarly and scientific communication, of course, is this information dissemination. And that's how we disseminate information. As I said uh, uh, um, in the previous slide, we disseminate information in science by writing articles in journals. But also we go to conferences, we have uh, posters, we do, uh, we present the information to our peers. There are many other ways that we can communicate uh, 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 our knowledge or and, and our ideas and our discoveries and, and that's part of the information dissemination process. This is a, a nice uh, way to see the uh, information too. We, all, we already saw the information cycle and this is another way to think about information. And in here we have one, two, three, and four categories. We have da data, and that's our numbers and letters and statistics, and, and they don't make sense. Once you process that data, then it has meaning and content. And that's what information is all about. Is data, is processed data with meaning and content. We can see letters. But, uh, but we have to organize those letters, we have to process those letters so we can make a sentence, so we can make a word. That's what it means, and that's information. Then comes the other uh, level, and this is very important, is when that information, that processed data, which we call information, is integrated into a large domain, context and relationship, and that's a knowledge domain, and that's a knowledge area or a discipline that's when it becomes knowledge, okay? And of course, if you apply that knowledge uh, to the benefit of the society, that, that is what is wisdom. But we can stop here in knowledge for a, for a moment. I also like to add, even though that's not part of this information uh, uh, hierarchy, is that uh, in my opinion, uh, another difference between information and knowledge, first is that knowledge is part of that is information that is part of a big uh, domain or discipline, but also in the in terms of the individual, uh, you, we can have the information, but we don't have the knowledge until that information gets processed in our brain. When until we we know there's a moment that when we are reading something, it, you know. And, and practices something and studying something, then that information becomes part of who we are. And we process that information, of course, according to our own experience, uh, our own uh, 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 cognition, and, uh, and our, our level of education, etc. That's when it becomes knowledge, but that's at, at the individual level. In here, we're talking about knowledge as an information in a context or discipline, okay? So, information seeking behavior. And these are some of the questions that information seeking behavior tries to explain or answer. How do we find information? How do we satisfy the information needs of our patrons? How do we search for information? How do we manage that information? And these questions can be applied to any members of the community. They may be professionals, they may be uh, uh, kindergartens, they may be young adults, adolescents, adults or, or, or senior, senior adults. So, or you can apply that also to groups. For example, you can apply that to uh, ch uh, church goers or to a, a minority, for example. How do they uh, uh, find information? So information seeking behavior is an area of a study in uh, scientific communication and, and scholarly communication, but it is also an area of study in, in uh, information behavior in general, okay? So let's see here, so we can say scholarly communication, in, in, because this is what we are concerned now with the scholarly communication or scientific uh, communication, but it's also 
in the general sense, in the general public, is also a, a, a is also an area of study, information seeking behavior and information dissemination, and we can call that, and maybe we can put it in here as uh, more more general. I would I would say information behavior. And that applies, uh, and that applies to everybody. Okay, information behavior. Okay. So scholar communication is part of the information behavior. Is 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 a communication that is it, it takes place in the scientific community. It takes place uh, with uh, the librarians, etc. Okay, and here we have uh, these uh, uh, these figures. Okay, and th this is very important. Here we have this triangle called the scientific community. Okay, and the current research, of course, is published in uh, electronic uh, search, journal articles, academic databases, conference, and index. And current research uh, equals uh, when you're going, when the scientific community, let me explain this, when the scientific community wants to do a, a new uh, research, when, you know, they're going to do an experiment, they, they're going to do a survey, anything, they, they, they want to collect new data, well, that's when they have the information need. That's when they come to our, they come and visit us in our library because they have information needs on current research. Okay, so they come to us and they, and we sit down and uh, they, the, the members of the scientific community explain what they plan to do and they want to see what the current research is. And they want to see how we, as a reference librarians, can help them in their quest for knowledge. Okay? That's very important. So here is an area where we have to be uh, aware that uh, we have a, a, a great opportunity to serve the scientific community. Okay? Because they're looking for current research, and where do they find this? Where do, do they do they find and that's information seeking, or we help them find information seeking to that current research? Well, we have to do electronic search. We have to look at journal articles. We have to go to the printed collection if those are if those journals are not being published electronically or are not indexed in an electronic database. Uh, we have to go and see those academic database, those conference proceedings, proceedings etc. So it, this is an area where the uh, librarian uh, uh, is. It's uh, I would say it's it's um, I, I wouldn't say it's needed the most or is the most important. But it's really, I mean, our function here in the, in this at this moment, when they the when the uh, scientists have information needs, it's crucial that we help the scientists or the or the group or the lab or or you know or the department to find that information on current research. So it's crucial. Our our uh, function there, our professional chip, is crucial to help. Uh, uh, to help in the quest for new knowledge, okay? And then, of course, after that, we have the creation of new knowledge. So, again, uh, as I was saying, uh, here, uh, in information needs, information seeking, and information use, we librarians uh, play a crucial role. Okay, uh, so this is a scientific community here, and of course they do this. But I I would add here in this uh, column 
the librarianship because we can help the scientific community in the creation of new knowledge and that's very important and here is a quote from Bush it says a record if it's to be useful to science must be continuously extended that meant what I said before that science is is uh, you cannot do science without looking at what others have done before you at prior science because you are extended extending that knowledge uh, uh, that uh, that somebody else did before you but it must be a store and above all it must all must be consulted and that's consult and must be consulted is information seeking behavior and information use for the creation of new knowledge so so if we see if we see our function as librarianships under under this umbrella of scholarly communication we realize how important we are that doesn't mean that in the, in other areas we're not important but because this is my passion I always like to uh, communicate that passion uh, of being a, 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 a reference librarian at a university okay I, I've done that and I love to do that and I hope to go back to, uh, to doing that so, some someday so that's my passion because I know how how much we can uh, pro how much help we can provide to the scientific community and how much they appreciate that they 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 love a good li uh, librarian that's why if you plan to be a, a a reference librarian you have to specialize in an area for example my area are the science uh, the social science and you can have a different specialization uh, health science, uh, engineering, uh, uh, more traditional science such as uh, uh, chemistry, biology, and physics, and the social science, of course, sociology, history, political science, uh, and uh, the humanities too. Uh, so, so my my advice to you all is that you try to specialize in one of those areas if if that's what you want to do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So, information seeking uh, behavior models, and there are many, many different models. Here we have uh, one, two, three, four models: Wilson, Durbin, Alice, and Couto model. Okay. So, information seeking behavior models. It is the purposive seeking for information as a cons as a consequence of a need to satisfy some goal. In this case, the goal is the creation of new knowledge. The individual may interact with manual information systems, systems or with computer-based systems. Nowadays, uh, uh, this is, this is, it will be computer-based system, but we, we, uh, the professional librarian, have to be present. This is where we have to be, we insert ourselves in this uh, model because we are the ones who have the key to get to the best information in the STEM. And remember, we're talking about the STEM here, but I think this, um, uh, this uh, applies to every other uh, area where uh, librarians are needed or required. Okay, so we have information needs up here, and then we have actions and behaviors. That's research, that's seeking behavior, that's where the reference librarian is, and then we have success or we have failure. But uh, but for success, if we are there, if we are there as professionals helping uh, the scientific community, the STEM community, let's call it the STEM community then uh, there will be success because uh, if you've been in my LS500 class there there is never a negative transaction and there is never a, a reference negative transaction it is always a positive reference transaction here's an example of the Ellis model 
okay we have the first stage is starting then chaining then monitoring then browsing differentiating extracting verifying and ending I'm not gonna uh, read this because you can you, you can read it yourself but this is for example how Alice sees information seeking behavior and I, I my my uh, dissertation was based on the on the Ellis model. Not not all, but part of the part of my I, I had an application of the Ellis model, and then I wrote a chapter in a book, and I'm gonna try that to see if I can find that chapter, and I will post uh, 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 that chapter in D2L, well. so you can read uh, the Ellis information model or maybe it wasn't the Ellis inf uh, information model exactly but it was a modified uh, Ellis inf information model and here it is here we have this is the other side okay we're talking we already talked about information seeking and now here is information dissemination and this is this is, like I said, this is the other area. Uh, of information behavior. Okay. And here we start here. And this is the research is initiated. And of course, there is information. Uh, I would say that before the research is initiated, we have information seeking behavior so information information seeking behavior would be here before research initiated it would be a, a prior stage so because to initiate any research you have to have done your literature review and your literature review means uh, uh, it means that you had to do information seeking behavior before okay so you you initiate your research you may write preliminary reports uh, you r complete your research and you report uh, your findings in conference and they they may be published as conference proceedings and the uh, preprints may be distributed once uh, that process has come and this is uh, actually this is part also the peer review process not the formal peer review process that it's up here but this is when you present your uh, findings to the scientific community and they question you and they make you think uh, 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 and they point out observations and things that you didn't think before that's part of the peer review it's an informal peer review but it's a peer review okay here you you uh, have submitted your manuscript manuscript and here we have the peer review and I think we talked about peer review before so I'm not going to go into detail there finally you have your your uh, journal publication you have uh, your article in a, a in a table of content services your article is indexed and abstract then you your article is cited in an annual review and is cited in the literature and for example it appears in the citation uh, sign citation index and it may be included in monograph and 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 also is part of the the opacs opacs our catalogs and the world cat now if we see this this uh, thing here we have two areas of information dissemination that can be measured okay the first one is what we call output and productivity right here and the second one is what we call visibility or impact if we go let's maybe go to the first or second slide this is what we were talking about here uh, that we can do with uh, reference and citations we can either measure output or productivity uh, or we can measure impact or visibility and these are the units of analysis okay let's go back here and this is very important um, citation analysis and bibliometrics is a is a 
specialty within librarianship. It's one of the things that, one of the tools that we have to measure productivity, output, and to measure visibility and impact. And those techniques, and I taught a course on, on that many years ago, like three or four years ago, not many years ago, a few years ago. Uh, one of the byproducts is that we can, by using bibliometrics, and citation analysis, we can uh, point to our core collection. Why? Because we will know by using bibliometrics and citation analysis what journals are being used by the scientists we are serving. In other words, if we work in a, uh, as an academic librarian and we do citation analysis, we will know what the members of that university that are doing research are one, are being published in those journals, and secondly, what journals are being consulted. So, journals, uh, publishing in journals, that would be, of course, productivity or output. And uh, reading those journals and citing those journals, it will be uh, impact. And then, we, if we, ha we, ha we come to the decision that we cannot have a larger uh, uh, journal collection, we, we say, well, we may only have the core collection, but in order, uh, and we know what the core journals are. Why? Because in those journals is where are, be, are the most, uh, are being consulted, and that's, uh, and I say that's uh, visibility, because they are being cited, and in those journals our uh, community is publishing and in those journals our communities is publishing therefore we can get rid of other journals but not of this journal because that's our core collection that's how we know uh, what the core collection is and here this is it answers this question how do we identify a core collection of journals that's the first question well we identify a core collection of journals by doing uh, citation analysis and bibliometrics and finding out what journals are being cited the most. Okay, and we also identify in what journals our, the uh, members of our community are publishing. We can also identify who are the most productive scholars in a discipline. And that's also very important. And not only uh, uh, the most productive scholars, that would be at uh, uh, the, uh, the personal or individual uh, unit, we can also identify who are the most productive universities, departments, or nations in a given uh, discipline. Okay? Just a second because I have to answer my phone. I'm sorry for the interruption. So as I was saying, uh, uh, we can we can identify the most productive scholar, the most productive department, the most productive lab, institution, university, and even nation. Another thing that we can do with bibliometrics and citation analysis is what are the scientific output areas. For example, if we want to know uh, or, or we don't, or, or we are being asked by our uh, patrons. In this case, uh, um, um, if we are a reference librarian at a university or a research center or a national lab or in a hospital, they want to know what areas are being uh, currently researched in health science. What are specialties? Well, we could find that out using bibliometrics, okay? And they want to see what's at the forefront of cancer research. Well, we can find that out using bibliometrics because we will go to the highest impact factor journals in cancer research and we will see the descriptors there and this is, this is what is uh, being published and this is what it is being cited. So 
using bibliometrics and citation analysis uh, techniques, we can identify those uh, areas and specialty uh, with a, a higher output. And this, this last one has to do with uh, visibility and impact. If we compare this question with this other question, this is about productivity and output. This is uh, about uh, impact and visibility, which is very important too, because you can be a scientist and you can write many papers, but nobody cites your papers. So how, how important is your research? It may be very important, of course, I'm not saying that it's not important, but maybe uh, uh, your area is not... Um, it has a, your the area in which you do research is very small so your impact factor is very low so we have to take all of that into consideration on maybe it, it, it has not tough, uh, it's an area that is not being fund, well funded and then if we work for a funded funding agency or a, 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 a private funding agency uh, we can say, okay, you know, this area uh, doesn't have impact, but or or it's not, uh, or the production is very low. We should fund this area, for example. So we can see again who is the most cited scientist, or who they are, or what are the most assigned, uh, cited groups, or labs, or departments, or you know, or even nations too. So that's that's very important for us librarians that, to have that information. And what is uh, bibliometrics and citation analysis? Is the application of a statistical methods to measure scientific output and impact. We use statistics. And there is a structural uh, bibliometrics and citation analysis that it is aimed at discovering knowledge and its structure. Uh, dynamic, it explores scientific communication, subdisciplines, and areas of specialization. And there is evaluative uh, bibliometrics that it aims to assess performance and to identify collaboration networks and strategic information. This, of course, uh, is not a course of uh, bibliometrics or citation analysis. But I, I, I want you to uh, plan that uh, small seed on on you because this is a this is a fascinating area this is some of the examples of work that i have done uh, using uh, uh, bibliometrics and citation analysis okay what i want you to get out of this lecture is the following first that there is information behavior second that there are two areas in information behavior two great two two big areas of study in information behavior one is information seeking behavior and the other one is um, uh, information dissemination the other uh, thing that i want you to get out is that when we look at this uh, information cycle we have to understand that we as librarians can be uh, are a very important part of it in any of the stages from the production of the creation of new information to the to the storage to the uh, and to the search okay third that in in stem every in stem in the stem areas in the stem disciplines research is built on prior research therefore uh, in order to start a new research you have to know what the current literature is and that's an area where we are crucial we our profession is crucial the scientists need librarians to keep them current with their area of expertise okay so that's that's another th thing i want you to to have in your mind let's see, okay also of course i want you to remember that uh, librarians have these tools called bibliometrics and citation analysis and we don't have to become experts on, on it 
uh, but if you are interested let me know and I will help you to get into into this area which is a beautiful area and that in bibliometrics and citation analysis we have two big areas one area is output and productivity and the other area is impact and visibility both areas are important and that by using bibliometrics we can find out for example what our core collection is what the core collection is okay by looking at visibility and impact there is a measure for for journals called the impact factor and the impact factor means that uh, some journals are have more visibility and more impact than other journals I in my next lecture I will go into a little bit more detail on bibliometrics and citation analysis okay so so you have you so you can get a better idea okay I think this is a lot of information and um, I'm gonna cut it and cut this uh, lecture here okay Thank you so much.